the program for you. Tag the classroom in your educative program. So we believe you will learn English, mathematics, general studies, full of knowledge. Come, let's have some fun. With that interesting song, we believe in awesome pupils like you, and we appreciate you for coming this far. This program, Tag the Classroom in Your Home, has been specially designed for you. A program that has been initiated by Lagos State Universal Basic Education Board last week. And it is to ensure that no child is left behind. And this addition is for lower primary classes. Beyond Grand Fully, and let's introduce ourselves to you. Hello, amazing pupils. I am Mantitino, your mathematics teacher. And today's mathematics class promises to be fun. Hello, wonderful pupils. High five. Yeah, we'll be having fun in our general studies class today. Mm? So I want you to be prepared and ready to learn. Okay, I am Auntie Lola and I'll be taking you through English studies which are called communication class. class. And in trial, we'll bring you the classroom, classroom in your home. home. Please relax and let's learn. My beautiful pupils at home for coming this far with us on this program i want to commend you you're welcome to today's lesson you're welcome to our english studies class which we call communication class and today we'll be looking at what i've treated on this lesson before on this program before but uh, i wish to return it back for us to uh, talk about it and look at more examples and the topic is present past and future tenses what did i say children present past and future tenses but before we delve into that topic i'm sure you all did your homework because i got feedback and it is highly commendable and now let's get the correction done and of course at your end you will have to mark if you're correct and if not put a star in front and write the correct answer are we good to go Okay, let's look at the first word. You recall we talked about word and antonym. Words and its opposites, right? Okay, so what is the antonym of natural? The opposite is artificial. Okay, what is the opposite of divide? The antonym of divide? The antonym is multiply. Okay, are you marking? Okay, so what is the antonym of raise? The antonym of raise is lower, raise, lower, okay? And for few, it is many, many. While the last one, early, the antonym of early is late. The antonym of early is late. Were you able to answer all correctly? Did you get all correctly? Or you deserve to be celebrated? Awesome. And now we move to a learning objective for today. That by the end of today's lesson, you should be able to identify the past, the present, and the future tenses of words. Are you ready? I'm sure you are. So let's begin with, well, the review of verb tense. On the board, I have... Um, I have, I have uh, a tabular form, a tab the tabular form of the present tense, the past tense, and the future tense, okay? So we'll look at the present first. Of course, present tense means in a simple term, today, every day, what to do today, okay? What is going to happen today? Of course, every other day is present tense at that particular point in time. While past, of course, from yesterday down to years back, things you've done in the past is past tenses, okay? And of course, future tense, things you will do later. Things you will do later, it can be tomorrow, it can be next year, it can be 10 years time. Things you will do later, tomorrow is future tense. I've just broken that down in simple terms, right? Present, now, past, what you've done in the past, and future, what you doing? What? Something you will do later in the future or tomorrow. Okay, having said that, let us look at a few examples on this board. Have you tested your listening yet? Can you hear me? Oh, beautiful. So, for the first example, I walk to school. 
Now, the verb in that sentence is walk, right? And walk is a present tense, okay? While if you, do, if you did that in the past, if you did that action in the past, it will be walked, which means for walk, we've added ed to it. Now, that's a simple trick to regular verbs when it comes to past tense. Adding ed to the end of an action word. Are you with me? Adding ed to what? To the verb, to that particular verb, that action you did at that particular point in time. Of course, in the past, you will add ed to it. So, I walked to school is in its past tense form. While future, something you will do later, okay, something you will do later, tomorrow, next year, or something, even in the next one minute, something you will do later on, not at that point in time, you can add will to it. I will walk to school. So the person reading this sentence already would have said, oh, it means this person has not done this action, right? We'll do later. I will walk to school. Okay, we move to the second example. Tom goes to school. It means Tom goes to school what? Every day, right? Something you do today, tomorrow, every day. It's constant, present tense. And for the past tense, it's what? Tom went. Tom went to school. So the verb in that sentence that makes it past tense is went. Tom went to school. And of course, for future tense, what make us know that um, that sentence is in future tense? Okay, it is will go. It will go to school. It will go to school. Or Tom will go to school. Whichever one. Then to another example, I buy milk. I buy milk, okay, means you buy milk on a regular basis, right? And for past tense, I bought milk, I bought milk, okay? And for the future tense, I will buy more milk, I will buy more milk. Of course, it's something you will do later, okay? Another one, I read my books, I read my books. And of course, in that context, it is present tense. Because, of course, you must, it means you read your book on a daily basis. Something you do repeatedly. I read my books. But when we're talking about um, that sentence in its past form, in past tense, to be, I read my book. Well, it, the, the, the spelling hasn't changed because read, read, the only way we can know the difference is when we mention it or when we talk about it. I read my books, okay? And in its future form, future tense, I will read my books. It means you've assigned the time when you will read your books, future tense, okay? Are you following? Okay. This is another one. It is sunny, which means at that point in time, presently, it is what? It is sunny. It is a sunny day. But when we want to relate that event in the past, it will be what the east will change to worse and the past tense will be it was sunny. It was sunny. While in future tense, of course, with the introduction of will, future tense introduction of will makes it future tense. So it will be, it will be sunny. It will be what? It will be sunny. Okay, let's move, let's move. We are still on more examples. Let's see this. Lola sings. Lola sings, present tense. But in past tense, it will be what the sings will change to what? We change to what, children? I can't hear you louder. Lola sang, Lola sang. And in its future form, it will be Lola will sing. Later, Lola will sing. Next week, next year, Lola will sing. Okay, we move to the next example. Are they text is friends? Which means are they text is friend on a regular basis today tomorrow are they text his friend every day you recall we said present tense today every day of course any sentence channeling itself to to this context is present tense while in its past form is introduction of ed do not forget i said when we have ed at the end of a verb it is past tense so are they texted his friends past tense but for future introduction of will or shall but in this context we are using will most times we use will are they will text his friends what did i say children are they will text his friend and will text makes us know that that sentence is in its 
future firm. Okay, another one, I study hard. You study regularly, that's fine. If you do that, you are B-E-S-T, because you are the best. I study hard. And in its past form, I studied hard, which means the Y has changed to I-E-D. I studied hard in the past, right? And that was why you were able to, you were able to pass your exam correctly. And in its future tense, I will study hard. It means maybe you have an exam coming up and you're giving a promise, I will study hard future. Okay, another example, I say hello. I say hello. Okay, that's present tense. In its past form, the say we change to what? We change to said. I said hello. And in future tense, I will say hello. I will say hello in its future tense. Okay, another one. Mom cooks rice for breakfast. It means mommy cooks rice almost every day, right? For breakfast, present tense. And past tense, mom cooked rice for breakfast. Mom cooked rice for breakfast. And how do we know that that sentence in its, in its past tense? The what? ED added to the verb, added to its verb. Okay, and the future tense, mom will cook rice. So, as a proof, you've been following after so much um, examples given i wanted to try this evaluation questions well what i wanted to do basically is to fill in the blank spaces with the correct tense okay present tense past tense and future tense it's basically what we've, we've treated um in the example so i will be back S-T-O-P, stop. Okay, so, were you able to attend all the work? Oh, that's beautiful. So let's do it together this time. Um, we were given, on the first line here, we were given the past tense here, okay? The first past tense verb, which is worked, which means we are working with this word here. So what is the present tense of worked? Let's see, sorry. What is the present tense of work? Of work is work. The present tense is work. Past tense worked. Then the future tense will be what? Let's see. Will work. Don't forget I told you the little trick to this, right? And were you able to get it correctly? Okay, let's look at the next one. This is it. The present tense, it. So the past tense will be what, children? At, that's an irregular verb. It's not with E, A, T, E, D, no. There is nothing like that. This is an irregular verb, so it is A, T, E. The word will change completely. And when we get to the future tense, it will be what? Will eat. So simple. Will eat. Okay, let's move to the next one. For the future tense, we have will speak, which means you are working with speak. So let's go. The present tense will be what? Speak. And the past tense will be what? Spoke, another regular verb. Speak, spoke, will speak. Okay, and the final one, we have past, uh, past tense verb, which is run. And so what will be the present tense? Run, okay. What will be the future tense? Will run. Did you get all uh, correctly? Oh, let me give you, okay. Let me celebrate you with rain cheer. Let's go. Two fingers. Three fingers, four fingers, five fingers. Wow, it's really raining. And that raining is for commendation because you are so awesome and I'm proud of you. Okay, so it is your assignment. I want you to put it down quickly. What I basically want you to do is what we did um, in the evaluation, okay? Fill in the blank spaces with the correct tense. I will be back.
Okay, children, welcome back. Have you been able to put it down? Oh, beautiful. So we can move, right? Is that okay? All right, so let's move. Let's move to the next segment, which is let's formulate it. What are we formulating today? Well, Antalala, today it is this interesting part. I'm scattered. Arrange me in alphabetical order. Okay, you're scattered. Let's see how far we can arrange you. Not too bad. Not looking bad, right? All right, let's go. Um, you recall I said we look at the first, the, the first alphabet. We look at the next one. And we look at the third one, we look at the fourth one. So the first one, oh, everything came out at once. Interesting. So the first letter is what? Hey, and it is apple. Apple, after apple, we have B, B, okay? After that, we have C. Oh, oh, we have two letters C. So what are we doing? Basically, we'll be looking at the second alphabet. If we have two letters starting a word, we look at the second alphabet and we can use that to judge which comes first. Is that okay? So after B, we have CA and CA is what? Cave and CI, which is cedar. Okay? Okay? So let's move to the next one. We have comb, zoo, guest and taco. All right? So let's see how it's being formed. Okay? Not too bad. Comb, guest, tackle. Zoo, C G T Z. Okay, the next one. All right, why don't you try this yourself before I give you the answer? Okay, oh, you've tried. Okay, all right, is this what you got? You need to be very fast, you know. All right, so C K faith, joy, love, C F J L. Okay, that's fine. And the next one, let's see, let's see. Are you trying it? Are you trying it? Please don't break your TV. Be calm with it. Have you gotten the answer? All right, so let's see. Let's see. Did you get it correctly? Fox, goat, lamb, sheep. F G L S. Is that what you got? Beautiful. Okay, do we have another one? Oh, that is it for today. I'm sure you enjoyed every bit of the lesson because. It is so interesting, right? Present tense, past tense, future tense, and two, I'm scattered. Kindly arrange me in alphabetical order. Well, that is all for we can go on today's lesson. Do not forget that today is a new day. You learned something new. It is time for our mathematics time, and it is with Antitino. I love you. Uh, welcome to today's mathematics class. When I say mathematics time, you say fun time. Good job, you. Mathematics time, fun time. And like always, today's mathematics class promises to be fun. I am Antitino, and today I will be teaching division using repeated subtraction without remainder. Antitino, I love division. Good. You are going to even love division better using repeated subtraction. But first of all, let's get correction to our previous homework. Open bracket 8 minus 5 plus 2, close bracket times 3. Open bracket 6 minus 4 plus 2, close bracket times 2. What do you do? You use the number outside the bracket to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. How do you do that? That is, the number outside the bracket is 3. The numbers in the bracket are 5, 8, 5, and 2. So we have three ta 8 times 3 minus 5 times 3 plus 2 times 3. 8 times 3 from our multiplication table is 24. 5 times 3 is 15. 2 times 3 is 6. Do the, f do the first... You, you do this first, 24, coming, 24, take away 15, and 24 take away 15 is 9. 9 plus 6 is equals to 15, and 15 is our final answer. I'm sure you got that sum correctly. Good job, you. 6 minus 4 plus 2, close bracket, times 2. What do you do? 
you use the number tool to multiply all the numbers in the bracket. The numbers in the bracket are 6, 4, and 2. So how do we do it? We expand saying 6 times 2 minus 4 times 2 plus 2 times 2. 6 times 2 from our times table, from our multiplication table is 12. 4 times 2 is 8 and 2 times 2 is 4. Then we do this first, 12 take away 8. 12 take away 8 is 4 and 4 plus 4 is 8 and 8 is our final answer. Did you get all the sums correctly? Good job you. Now let's give ourselves a round, round it very well. Round, round of applause. Good job, you. Well done. Yes. Now it's Brain Busters time. It's Brain Busters time. And I'm so excited about today's Brain Busters questions. Let's see. Work out these facts. What's the facts? Yes, a cow has four legs. How many legs do two cows have? How many legs do three cows have? How many legs do four cows have? How many legs do five cows have? And how many legs do six cows have? Do this in 40 seconds and your time starts now. Okay, well done, well done, but it's 40 seconds and it's time up. Let's get correction. Yes. How many legs do two cows have? One cow has four. So two cows have, is either you say four times two or you count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. Very good. How many legs do three cows have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12. How many legs do four cows have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16. How many legs do five cows have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. How many legs do six cows have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 24. And I know you can also do it as 2 times 4 because one cow has 4 legs, 2 cows we have 2 times 4 legs, 8. 3 cows we have 3 times 4, 12. 4 cows we have 4 times 4, 16. 5 cows we have 5 times 4, 20. And 6 cows we have 6 times 4, 24. Did you get the sums correctly? Good job you. What do we give ourselves to celebrate our active performance and success in today's Brain Busters? Let me see. Hmm, okay, let me give you the parapanda chair. Parapanda. Parapanda. Senorita. Good job, you. You are smart and I love you so much. Yes, learning objectives. What do I expect you to be able to do at the end of the lesson today? By the end of the lesson, you should be able to divide numbers using repeated subtraction i promise today's lesson is going to be fun and at the same time educative but what do you need to be able to divide numbers using repeated subtraction yes your 100 percent focus and attention let's go in division 
Division is the method of distributing a group of things into equal parts. Yes, we have taught division before. So we know that division is a method of distributing a group of things into equal parts. Yes. It is one of the four major, it is one of the four basic operations of arithmetic, which gives a fair result of sharing. Division basically talks about sharing. Yes, it is one of the four, four basic operations of arithmetic, which gives a result of fair sharing. Fair sharing. Its symbol is this. Anytime you see this symbol or this, you know you are supposed to divide. Yes. Repeated subtraction. What do we mean by repeated subtraction? I'm sure you are not new. So repeated, yes, I taught you repeated addition when we were doing multiplication. So today we are talking about repeated subtraction, yes. Repeated subtraction is a method of subtracting the equal number of items from a larger group. The equal number of items from a larger group. It is also known as division. So you can also define division as repeated subtraction, yes. For example, we have 25 divided by 5. When we want to use repeated subtraction, you say 25 minus 5. Your dividing number will be what you keep subtracting from, your, from the number you are... Your dividing number is 5. Your, sorry, your divisor is 5, your dividend is 25. So you keep subtracting 5 from, from 25, from what's next, until you get 0 or a number smaller than 5. Don't worry, you will understand what I'm, I'm trying to say. Now I have 25 minus 5, I have 25 dots. I've taken away 5 from it, it's remaining 20. I come back here, I've written, I've drawn 20 dots again. I took away 5 from it, it's remaining 15. Here I have 15 dots. I take away 5 from it, it's remaining 10. 10 dots minus 5, I have 5. And 5 minus 5, I have 0. So you keep subtracting 5 until you get 0 or a number smaller than 5. Until you get 0 or a number smaller than your dividing number. Are we together? say together we are. We, we repeatedly remove 5 from 25 until the remainder is 0. That is until there is nothing to remove anymore. Like this. Yes, what I showed you before is what I'm doing again. 25 divided by 5. Number of times, yes, the first 5 has gone away to get 20. Let me show you again. Let's see it again. Yes, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 apples. So the first thing we do is to subtract 5 from 25. So 5 from 25, we are left with 20. That's the first subtraction we did. God gave us 20. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So the first subtraction, 25 minus 5, gave us 20. Yes, that's 1. We subtracted 5 from 20 again to get 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yes, so that's number 2. We subtracted 5 away from 15 to give us 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's number 3. We are subtracting 5 again from 10 to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we are not done yet until you get a number smaller than your divisor or until you get 0. So uh, the number we are using to divide is 5. And we still have 5. 5 and 5 are equal. And it can divide. So you still have to divide 5 from 5. 5 minus 5 gives us nothing so how many times did we subtract five from 25 we subtracted five five times so 25 divided by five give us five 25 divided by five using repeated subtraction gave us five 
we kept we kept subtracting five until we got zero. More examples: fourteen divided by two, yes. Fourteen divided by two. Let's see the number of times two we divide fourteen. Fourteen minus two is equal to twelve. Don't forget we are using repeated subtraction. So you keep subtracting two until you get zero or a number smaller than two. So 14 take away two, 12, that's the first step. 14, 12 take away two, 10, that's number two. 10 take away two, eight, that's number three. Eight take away two, six, that's number four. Six take away two, four, that's number five. Four take away two, two, that's number six. And two take away two, Zero, that is seven. How many times did we subtract two? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 14 divided by two is seven. 14 divided by two is seven. We subtracted two seven times to get zero. Are we together? Say together we are. Good job, you. Now do this. Now do this. How well have you listened to today's lesson? How well did you follow today's lesson? Prove it by scoring all the sums in your evaluation question. It's evaluation time, it's assessment time. It's assessment time, it's time to prove yourself. Let's see our evaluation question. 36 divided by 6 and 21 divided by 7. You have two minutes to attempt this question and your time starts now. Okay, pens down, it's time up, it's time up. And Titino, it was interesting, I told you. Yes, let's see our correction. 36 divided by 6 using repeated subtraction. The first thing you do is 36 minus 6 gives us 30, that's the first one. 30 minus 6 gives us 24, that's the second time you are subtracting 6. 24 minus 6 gives us 18, that is the third time. 18 minus 6 gives us 12, that's the fourth time. 12 minus 6 gives us 6, and 6 minus 6 gives us 0. Remember, you must subtract 6 until you get 0 or a number smaller than 6. Now let's count how many times we subtracted 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 36 divided by 6 is 6. Did you get that sum some correctly? Good job, you. I know you are very smart. Well done. Yes. Yes. 21 divided by 7. Using repeated subtraction, what do you do? You say 21 minus 7. That's the first time. Give us 14. 
21 minus 7 gives us 7. That is the second time. And 7 minus 7 gives us 0. Remember, you must keep subtracting 7 until you get 0 or a number smaller than 7. So let's count how many times we subtracted 7. 1, 2, 3. So 21 divided by 7 is equals to 3. Did you get the sum correctly? Good job, you. Now let's give ourselves the superhero check. Match, match, I match like an ant. One, two, three, I clap my hands. Super hero. Good job, you. Smart you. Well done. Yes. Now it's assignment time. Don't forget to do your assignment. And it is very important to do anti zone work. Don't just do it and keep your book at home. Do it and submit in time to the WhatsApp number, which we always call at the end of the lesson. And peradventure, you don't know, you might be winning yourself some goodie packs. Yes, 18 divided by 9 and 10 divided by 5. Capture this in 10 seconds and your time starts now. Okay, okay, say all right, all right. And that is it for today. We have come to the end of another interesting yet educative mathematics class. I promised you fun at the beginning of the class and I'm sure you had it, yes. But don't go away because it's not over yet. Uncle Sheyi is here for another educative time in general studies class. Till I come your way next lesson, and Titinu loves you, and from me, it's bye-bye. Hello, wonderful pupils. How are you today? High five. Yeah, you're welcome to your favorite program, The Classroom in Your Home. And I'm your general studies teacher, Uncle Sheyi. Today, we will be looking at classification of animals based on diet. Of course, diet means the food they eat, okay? So we'll be classifying animals based on the food they eat. But before we go into today's lesson, let's have correction to the previous homework that you were given. In our last class, I asked you to mention five birds that you know. Kiwi, ostrich, parrot, eagle, hawk, wandering abattress, sparrow, dove and so on and i'm sure you are correct so you deserve a cheer well done my friends well done so today we are looking at the classification of animals based on diet and by the end of the lesson you should be able to identify animals according to diet you should be able to what identify animals according to diet okay now animals need food to survive yes animals in fact any living thing needs food to what to survive without food no animal will live all right and as you can see on the screen you can see these animals having their meal okay so that they can survive all right, that's a lion, okay? Yes. All right, now you must note that the size of an animal does not determine what it eats, okay? The size of an animal does not determine what it eats. Some animals are big and yet they eat only plants. Can you give me an example? An elephant, good. An elephant, as big as an elephant is, it feeds only on what? plants okay so the size of an animal does not determine the food that they eat and why you will see some very tiny animals they eat flesh okay as you can see from the screen this is an eagle feeding on the flesh of another animal okay so the size of animals does not what it doesn't determine the food that they eat all right, let's classify animals according to what they eat, okay? And we have the herbivores, the carnivores, the omnivores, and the detrivores or 
scavengers okay so we'll be looking at these four and be classifying them one by one herbivores what are herbivores herbivores are animals that eat only plants plants like fruits herbs shrubs and so on okay so animals that are classified as herbivores they eat only plants and what are those examples of the animals that we can call herbivores you have cow yes cow they feed only on plants okay cow elephant goat okay deer okay giraffe giraffes are tall yes giraffe and they have long necks horse all right sheep can you mention four herbivores yes sheep cow elephant giraffes deer and so on good job you good job you now let's look at carnivores say carnivores again carnivores all right carnivores are animals that eat only flesh okay they eat only flesh or meat as the case may be all right and let's look at some of the examples of carnivores they include lion of course lion they eat flesh okay you have tiger tiger you have lion lioness tigress okay ox yes ox are birds and they are what carnivores okay you are surprised spider yes spiders eat other animals so they are also what they are carnivores yes they eat other animals other animals that are trapped in their web yes okay let's continue dogs yes of course you know dogs love they love to eat meat and what bones yes dogs dogs are also carnivores so let's mention them lion yes tiger yes spiders very good dogs yes and what again i want to mention a bird ox very good very good well done now so we have looked at herbivores we have looked at carnivores so let's go to omnivores what are omnivores omnivores are animals that can eat both plants and flesh okay omnivores are animals that can eat both plants and flesh all right let's look at examples of omnivores they include bears yes bears bears can feed on flesh and they can also feed on plants yes bears chicken you are surprised yes chicken are also omnivores because chicken they feed on insects on ants yes they feed on them and they likewise feed on grains plants so they are what they are omnivores yes all right pigs pigs are also omnivores pigs human beings you myself we are omnivores because we eat meat and we eat plants we eat vegetables of course and while we are eating our vegetables we still eat fish we eat meat okay all right so human beings are also omnivores yes cats yes cats they are also omnivores cat feeds on mice or mouse as the case may be of course and they eat some plants also okay so omnivores are animals that feed on both plants and flesh and examples we have human beings yes cat yes chicken yes and so on well done my friend all right let's go to the next one the last one detrivers or scavengers can you say that detrivers or scavengers and what are detrivers detrivers are animals that feed on dead or decaying animals okay dead or what decaying animals they don't eat fresh meat of course they feed on flesh but they feed on dead or decaying animals and examples you have what you have vultures 
vultures yes vultures are scavengers or death rivers okay and you have um raccoon raccoons are also what death rivers and as a matter of fact hyenas too feed on dead on dead or decaying animals hyenas yes all right so what are death rivers or scavengers scavengers are those animals that feed on decayed or dead animals all right now you can pick your pen and open your books okay quickly and let's have our evaluation you can number your work from one to five and as our as we always do you don't need to what to write the questions i will be reading out the questions for you all you need to do is to what write the correct answer you spell them correctly okay all right have you numbered your work from one to five okay let's start question number one dash animals feed on both plants and flesh dash animals feed on both plants and flesh you have omnivores herbivores carnivores detrivores so i want you to put down the correct answer can we move on all right we can move to the next question question number two chicken and cat are examples of dash chicken and cat are examples of dash herbivores detrivores omnivores carnivores pick your answer quickly quickly oh you've done that well done so i can go to number three number three vultures feed on dash vultures feed on dash plants grains meat dead or decaying flesh pick your answer quickly the correct one i'm sure you've done that so i can read the question number four for you okay an elephant is a good example of dash an elephant is a good example of dash herbivores detrivores omnivores and carnivores herbivores detrivores omnivores carnivores please Put down your answer quickly. All right, on to the last question. Question number five. A dog is an example of dash. A dog is an example of dash. Herbivores, detrivores, omnivores, carnivores. Put down your answer quickly. All right, have you done that? Okay, now I'll be giving you some few seconds to cross-check your work. Ensures that you ensure that all your words are correctly spelt. Okay, do that quickly. Dot your eyes and cross your T's. Okay, now you can stop. S T O P, stop. All right, let me give you the correct answers to these questions. All right. And as I'm giving you, you give a tick if you are correct. Question number one, dash animals feed on both plants and flesh. Dash animals feed on both plants and flesh. Omnivores. Omnivores feed on both plants and flesh. Number two, chicken and cat are examples of dash. Of course, omnivores. Chicken and cat are omnivores. Because chicken and cat feed on plants. And they also feed on flesh. Number three, vultures feed on dead or decaying animals, dead or decaying flesh. Question number four, an elephant is a good example of herbivores. An elephant is a good example of herbivores. The last question, a dog is an example of carnivorous animals a dog is an example of carnivores did you get five out of five four out of five three out of five you deserve a rolly chair roll let's go one two three four five six bravo well done okay paraventure you didn't do very well in the evaluation don't worry you should not be depressed i'm very sure in our next class you will do better and for you to do better you need to tune into the program in time and listen attentively to the teacher okay now let's put down our assignment and what's the question 
Mention two examples of each of the following. Mention two examples of each of the following. Herbivores, detrivores, omnivores, carnivores. So I want you to put it down quickly. Quickly do that. Mention two examples of the following. Herbivores, detrivores, omnivores, carnivores. Okay? Alright, have you done that? To our favorite segment of the program, Did you know? 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 All right. Are you ready for our questions on this segment? I am ready. Okay. What's the question? All right. Do you know the animal that has its heart in its head? The animal that has its heart in its head. How will an animal have the heart in its head? Do you know the animal? Oh, you do. Okay, please put down your answer then. Put it down. I will be glad if you are correct. Okay, have you done that? All right, let's see if truly you are correct. Oh, a shrimp. Of course, you know what's a shrimp. A shrimp is a sea animal, yes. You can find them in, in water. Okay, it has its heart in its head. The heart is located behind the brain. Oh, that's serious. Okay, so you know now that a shrimp has its heart in its head. Okay, all right. So I've learned something new today that there is a particular animal with the heart in its head, and that animal is called a shrimp. All right, that is it for today. I hope you enjoyed the class. Yeah, I had a great time and I learned something new. Okay, until next time, that I will be seeing you again. Uncle Shei says, Be good. Bye. Awesome. Yeah. You would agree with me that today's lesson was interesting, mm. educative, and at the same time fun filled. Uncle Sheyi, are we on the same page? Yes, Auntie Tinu, we are on the same page, and I totally agree with you. And we should give kudos to our pupils for their rapt attention and for always submitting their homework and comment in good time. We say, Good job, you. Well done, and we are proud of you. Auntie Lola. Yes, and we want to tell you that there is a YouTube channel you can watch this program, Paraventure. You missed any of the episodes. Lagos Suburb YouTube channel. I repeat, Lagos Suburb YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. You have a phone, you have access to your parent phone. Please log on to that channel any day, any time. Don't forget to send in your comments, question, and homework to the number showing on the screen. The number is 081-508-65663. SMS and WhatsApp messages only. only. Do not call. Do you love your family and friends? If you love your family and friends, you must stay safe for you and for them. To stay safe for everyone you love, wash your hands regularly, practice social distancing. If you must go out, wear your face, face mask. mask. Till we come your way next lesson, remember, at last to bed, we, we leave, leave no child, child behind. behind.